Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kudla. I'm Evgeny Donskoy. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko, and, and you're, you're listening, listening to the Game to Love podcast. Hey, welcome back, tennis fans. Uh, it's been a bit of a busy week for myself, for JG. Apologies for uh, not bringing you a podcast sooner. Uh, I know I did one with, uh, obviously, John Silk earlier in the week, and uh, JG's hopefully now fully recovered, are you? from? Uh, yeah, no, mate, I'm feeling good. Well. I don't know what it was. It wasn't COVID. I know people were asking. Um, <laughs> I tested negative for that, but I just I went downhill for like five days after Wimbledon. I think probably a lot of drinking, all the stuff with England as well, the disappointment so. of that. It just got, it all took its toll on me. I was just, I wasn't very well. I was in bed most of the time, but I am back feeling good. And this podcast, as you can all see, is about the Tokyo Olympics. Um, we could be doing more stuff closer to the time. But I was just having a look at it starting very soon, if I'm honest. And yeah. there's a lot of people withdrawing. Um, yes. It's not the field we was hoping to see. There's a lot of big names coming out. I go on Twitter every day and you see them tweeting, oh, he's withdrew, she's withdrew. Um, and I was I posed the question, who's left at one stage? Um, I was hoping maybe I could uh, step up for, G- <laughs> for GB. I think a few of them wow. have got COVID at the time. So anyone, mate. we could be having what? Jack Draper going for the UK. Well, there's still one big man who's the uh, double champ, who the last win, the winner of the last two Olympic Games, Sir Andy Murray. He will be going to the Olympics uh, apparently, so he wants to defend his crown. He wants to go for a third Olympic title. It's got to be a record, surely, uh, especially amongst uh, all of these big three players who are scrambling around trying to get a. a gold medal to add to their tally of grand slams and there's murray there already with two gold medals so stick that in your pipe and smoke it hey <laughs> big yes. three. So i'm having a little look now and it starts on the 24th of july to the 1st of august it's the 18th edition of uh tennis at the olympics it's a bit controversial in itself a lot of people saying is there any need to have tennis at the olympics do tennis players put any worth on tennis being at the Olympics, obviously, a lot yeah. of their focus is on Masters, Grand Slams. Do they really care about an Olympic medal? I think they do, yeah. I think that obviously one player that cares about it more than anybody else right now, Novak Djokovic, and he will be making his journey there. He's announced that he is going to Tokyo. He wants the Golden Slam. He has three Grand Slams, as if he's not going to go to the Olympics. Uh, and then try and complete the the calendar year golden slam it, it, surely this is just a chance for history he can't pass up and especially with everybody dropping out as well <laughs> yeah. your toughest uh, opponent's going to be andy murray there then uh <laughs> quite fancy his chances to be honest yeah but one thing i do want to do is dispel that myth a little bit and i even started off saying oh who's left because some people a lot of Djokovic fans as well no surprise there on twitter have been saying the field's not that bad. I think you've got eight of the top 10 in the race to Turin. And in yeah. theory, that's probably the best indication of the rankings anyway, isn't it? Because they're the top 10 players who have played well this year. So if you're looking at them top 10, I do have the race to Turin up here. It's not worth me sharing it unless you've got it. But I think people know it anyway. Um, you've got Djokovic leading. You've got Sitapas, Berrettini, Rublev, Zverev, Medvedev. They're the top six. And as far as I know... All six of them are going to be there. Is that correct? Mate, well, uh, yeah, you've got Djokovic. So Djokovic, Sittipas, Med- Berrettini, Rublev, Med- Zverev, Medvedev. That's it, mate. Yep, indeed. So then yeah. number seven is Rafael Nadal. He's the first one we know 100%. He's not going to be that going. He released a statement on Twitter. you got Hubert Hercatch. As far as I know, he's going to be playing. Yep. Uh, number nine, Aslan Karatsev. If there's any space left in Russia, obviously they've got some good players there before. <laughs> I'm hoping we'll see Aslan there representing his country for the Olympics. Hope um, so. I was having a look there for Russia um, on here because it tells you how many players are, are, are sort of entered from each country. Yeah, indeed. Um, I was having I a seem to find quick, it right quick, now. Well, you want to look down Russia? I can tell you quickly on the... Uh, oh. Why is it go? It goes from Romania to oh, here we go. Yeah, he is in there. Is Hatchinov, Karatsev, Rublev, Medvedev, 
is in the men's singles, it says. Okay, cool. So, and in the men's doubles, it's I'm not sure if this is the actual pairings, but Karatsev Medvedev, it says next to each other, and Hatchinov Rublev. So, um, maybe that can change. I'm yeah, not sure possible. the whole format. We don't, have, <laughs> we don't have an Olympic every every year, so it's hard to sort of know. And then number 10 on the race of terrain is Denis Shapovalov. Obviously, he's had a good tournament at Wimbledon, did quite well, got a few extra points, and he's moved into the top 10 now, which is great for him. Just pushing Yannick Sinner out of there. Um, but he's not going to be there. He's confirmed. Shapo's not there. Yannick Sinner, I know I mentioned him. He's another one who's not going to be there. Uh, I know you did a little list, so we, maybe we, should, we can go through it and see who is playing and who isn't playing. It is very difficult. So apologies, the list is not great. <laughs> We've just tried to throw something together because it's very Indeed. difficult to sort of... There's not actually one list. No one's made one because everyone keeps coming Why and going. There's an official and... like, listing that they could just have on there yeah. where they just had a list of all of the top like 100 or 200 players and then they could just gradually just cross them out and then just have that or just have a separate list that just said yeah. withdrawals on an olympic website yeah. something like that that would be yeah. an idea maybe for the next people who run in the next olympics in paris yeah. maybe they do that just, just on the whole though and this is something where i'm going to actually defend a lot of the Djokovic fans because you always have that divide on twitter you get all like the rafa federer fans and they're all saying this thing about oh, Djokovic is easy going to win it. There's no one there to compete with him. You've got all the big players uh, dropping out. It, I don't actually really believe that too much because it seems to me, I've just said there, if you look at the race that are in, a lot of them players are going to be there. And if you're counting Dominic Team, Roger Federer, as Serena Rapper. Williams on the women's, <laughs> Andreescu, these yeah. players who aren't, no, I'm not saying Rafa because Rafa is playing, playing great. I'm talking about the ones who aren't necessarily I mean, more clay top cool. form. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't matter. I'm talking about people who aren't in form. You can't just you can't look at Dominic Team and think, oh, that's a big uh, miss for uh, Djokovic. I'm sure he would pre he'd prefer to play uh, Dominic Team in Tokyo than say her cats, right? Yeah, maybe. right now, probably. Of course he would. That's what I'm saying. So I think it's a bit it's a bit naive of people just to be dismissing the field here in Tokyo because there's some really good players still. And I think it's got the makings of being a good tournament, but there's the big factor of having no fans. But let's get your list up anyway, so we can talk about that afterwards. And as you can see, these are the names you've gone through. So out of the top, you've got Federer, uh, Team, and the Dow. For me, Team, Federer, not really big losses at all um, in the fact that they've not been playing great. I think Federer has played, he sort of grew into form a little bit at Wimbledon. So that is disappointing, I guess. Yeah. No Agut, no, no Chapeau, no Rude. You've got Mon Monfils. I'm not sure if he'll be playing. I know he's just got married today. So. Hey, congrats, Gail. Yeah. And uh, Elena, well done. Yeah. So, yeah, moving down. Raonic there as well. It's another big hard-court player, mate, that I'm sure a lot of these players... Could have done a lot happy. of damage, Raonic. Yeah, I think that they'd be happy he's not there, to be honest. A lot of those players, big serving. Garin, not that surprised he's not going. Predominantly the clay court man. Yeah, Keep going one, down. One, one list people look, I'm not on the list, I'm not sure if they are from 12 Travel 21, and that's Kyrgios and Del Potro. Yeah, obviously, Del Potro's not played for ages, <laughs> but he like them two players are the real sort of fawn I, I feel in Djokovic's side. He, he's probably pretty relieved that neither of them are going to be there, if I'm honest. But yeah, I think yeah, he's definitely. going to still have some tough tests. Uh, you've got Berrettini who's looking great, you're back on the Medvedev. hard courts, Medvedev on the hard courts. I'm sorry. You Zverev. cannot rule him out whatsoever. It's Zverev as well. If if they find their form and their rhythm, they could be definitely unbeatable. Really, right. it could be. It could be an amazing tournament. I don't think this is a as foregone conclusion as say Wimbledon. I think Djokovic was more of a favourite to win Wimbledon than this yeah. Olympics. I think so. Yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, I think this one is going to be very exciting. Uh, I like the fact that we've got all the big hitting hardcore players are actually playing in there as well. Yeah, that's so, true. Even an Aslan Karatsev, mate. Let's see what yeah, he could do. Back on the back, hard court. Back on the hard, mate. Come on, Aslan. Let's go. Let's see if you can win. Imagine if you won the Olympics. That would be amazing. <laughs> mate, from a GB perspective, it's been disappointing. Dan Evans testing positive for COVID. Uh, yeah. We will touch on the women's. I don't have a list for the women's, but we'll talk about some of the withdrawals there. But with with that, we've got uh, Joanna Conta as well, testing positive for COVID. Very unfortunate for them. We've got no Carl Edmund. I can see sneaking on the right-hand side. He's still injured, of course. Yeah. Um, 
But who do we have? It looks like probably the highest ranked, probably not even on your list, is Andy Murray. So I don't think he's all the way down here, mate. I think he doesn't even Does he get make it. it? He's there we go. <laughs> oh, he's on the other confirmed intro. <laughs> defending champion. I like that that they have that next to his name. Uh, at 124 in the world. But he's showing signs of uh, improvement, which at least is something. Uh, that's all you can hope for with Andy at the moment. It's just that he keeps improving. Be nice to see him back on the hard courts and uh, playing some of his best tennis again. Maybe this is just the, his best uh sort of a uh, tournament really <laughs> he's won it twice maybe he can do it again who knows maybe the olympics is where andy murray comes to life sir andy Mate, maybe figure. we'll have um it do you reckon draper's gonna be given a chance maybe yeah why not mate? i don't know if it, I don't, i'm not sure how it works with the rankings and stuff i know it's quite tight and there's a big qualification as well to get in mm. so it's gonna be difficult i'm ass- i'm assuming they'll give a lot of uh japanese players um entries in wild cards or whatever if that's possible i'm sure they'll, they'll work a way to do it i saw it on on the wikipedia page it looks like they've got 11 play or nine players no 11 sorry for japan more than any other country which is wow. crazy i think united states have 12 so somehow they're going to be what's the, what's the other guy from from japan what which one ben. Is Ben, well, we ben mcclacken i'm sure ben mcclacken <laughs> will be playing the singles if i'm honest they're going to be putting whoever they can in Ooh, ooh, why not? Yeah, mate? there we go. 12 Travel 21. Ben McClacken. I wouldn't be surprised mate, if you see him there. Bring him in. Go on, the McClacks. We like it. Uh, yeah. Mate, Andy Murray, I want to touch on him again. He was, I remember him saying that his most proud moment uh, in sport was leading GB out at the Olympics. And that isn't, that's how much it means to him. Hence, he's won two of them. It means a lot. Can he do anything like get into like a, a deep into the tournament? Do you think? I, yeah. I'm interested to see. Could Andy Murray cause like some crazy upset in this in this Olympics? I would well, love that. How about this then, Ben? We'll do this right now. I want you now to give me a list of three players. I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but I want your gold, silver, and bronze for the. We're just going to do the men's singles. So obviously in the Olympics mm. you've got the men's singles. Mm. We'll do the women's singles after as well. We're not going to do any doubles. You've got the men's doubles, women's doubles, mm. and then mixed doubles. So that's mm. the one, two, what's it? Five events where there's medals up up for grabs for. But let's start th- things off with the gold, silver, and bronze for the men's. Uh, we've got Gunner here. Bold prediction. Third place Rublev. Second place Verev. First place Berrettini. Doesn't wow. even have Djokovic on the podium. Um, I, I'm just going out there completely. Like, if I'm being honest, my head says this. It's going to be very boring, but I'm going to give you some dark, dark horses as well. I'm going the most boring you can get. Djokovic, gold, Medvedev, silver, and I think the bronze could go to her catch, if I'm honest. That's the way I see it going, could something do. like that. Could but do. As, as my dark horse selections, as people to watch out for, I don't know if I'm going to go down a little bit and then I can yeah. list them off. Um, I think Aslan Karatsev, of course, <laughs> if things start going well for him, he could do it. And then the other name I wanted to talk about, if you go down, it's all the way down, um, is Corder. Yeah. Sebastian Corder, the American who I fear more than any others, to be honest. I know you've got Apelka, you've got Isner, some of the big servers. I think Apelka's withdrawn, is that They're correct? They're both out, the big, the big boys. Oh, big Apelka, I think. Fritz is out as well. But yeah, you've got big... Johnson's out. Yeah, mate. What Everyone... Americans are left then? <laughs> Hardly any. Mate. Tommy probably Paul. Corder is. Tommy, maybe. Tommy Paul no. and Corder. <laughs> probably Tommy Paul is the highest rank, but then Corder well, potentially could do well. I think if you're an American listening to this, I TFO honestly fancy Corder to do very well. This uh, is we've got Gio in the chat going for this. Rublev third, Djokovic second, uh, and Basasvili first. <laughs> That's a surprise. Interesting. I'm looking on that other thing that you sent over to me, and it's saying the men's singles is Tommy Paul, TFO, Sangren, and Giron. But I don't know if that may have changed, and that's why Corder's now on the list. Possibly somebody's disappeared from that one. I'm not sure. Yeah. But anyway. yeah, it's very difficult to sort of do any too many predictions. But this is just an initial thing, just to see who is who's withdrawn, uh, because there's certainly a lot of withdrawals here. But my, what the whole argument I wanted to make is I think we're still going to be seeing a great tournament. I think it's going to be good. We're going to have some good tennis players playing. But maybe I should rephrase. I don't think we're going to be seeing a great tournament in terms of the feeling of it because there's not going to be fans. And yeah. it does suck a little bit not to have fans there in an Olympics, which for me is all about the fans. 
It's all about countries getting together. Yeah, it's a special thing. feeling. We had it in, in London that time. I know you went to a few events. I went to a few events. The buzz was amazing. I've never been inside. I was inside the velodrome watching the cycling. It was one of the loudest experiences of my life. It was amazing. It really was. I don't even like cycling, but I loved it at the time. We're the best um, at that. <laughs> yeah, and we was actually quite good. So with with this, I think it is going to be sad. We're going to lose that buzz. We're going to lose the fact of the the bubble of sort of all the different uh, countries sort of meeting with other countries in different disciplines, um, the camps. It's, it's a shame. It really is. But I still think there's some good tennis players there and we could still yeah. see some good tennis off the back of it because Djokovic will be hungrier than ever. He will be super, super hungry because he wants the Golden Slam. And it's looking like a real possibility now after winning Wimbledon. Mate, I think so. I'm super excited. That's the person that I'm going to be backing in this tournament. Djokovic is... He's on the road to the Golden Slam. I want to see him complete it. I'm having him as my winner of the tournament, even before we've even seen any draws, anything. I've just got a feeling that he's just going to be so fired up for it. I just, you just worry. The only way that you can beat, and I've been watching tons of his highlights, um, working on something a little bit special for you guys. So I've been watching a lot of Djokovic highlights and it's just astounding to me. There's just a different, there's a different mentality with him and he just can turn it on. And we've seen it again in Wimbledon. It's just second to none. I'm just so blown away by how he can, he can even do it to the biggest players in the world. And you see, even when he's, people like Medvedev get to the finals, even like Tsitsipas gets to the finals, even like Berrettini get to the finals, it doesn't matter because if Djokovic wants it, he takes it. And I think that that's the difference, really. You have to beat him. That was the point I was going to say. You have to literally wipe him off the court, otherwise you lose. You can't. You have to hit, You have to play a perfect game, mm. really. And that's the thing that I think he's going to turn up and any... He, it doesn't even matter if he's got half an injury or anything. He, it's not gonna. He's gonna keep going until the end. I think we could see somebody like a, a like a Zverev, if I'm honest, like mm. do it very well. And this I think, serves well. Mate, I think Medvedev's the man. I really yeah, do. I mean, and the reason I'm saying it, I don't want to be like I, too. I, if we do do uh, bracket predictions or whatever, I don't think I'm actually gonna pick Djokovic. I'm not sure if it's on the website. Uh, yeah, I've been thinking cool. long and hard about it. The big reason is, and the reason I think he can slip up. It's nothing to do with the fans, nothing to do with the where it is or the surface. It's about being best of three. It's a best of three tournament, this one. It's the not a Grand Slam. It's best of five, though. Is it 100% best of five? Yep. But I'm Olympics. not sure if it is this year, mate. Is it not? Olympics normally are, man. Are you yeah, sure? It's normally best of three up until the final, then best of five. Okay, so it's up. Uh, it's at best of five in the uh, final. But up, and, up until... That, uh, that's, that could be right. I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. So Jordan's saying best of five in the final. Okay, so on that basis, I still think if he is in the same half of the draw with, say, a, one of these big hitters like a, a Medvedev or a Sverev, he could lose best of three. I think I think he is unbeatable over a best of five scenario. But recently we've seen against Massetti, went two sets to love down. Sitter pass, two sets to love down. Um, he's done it a few times with a few of the other players. He needs himself to get going. Um, in, in many matches, Djokovic, and he's not going to be afforded that luxury. You can say, oh, he does all right in the Masters, but he looks a little bit more vulnerable in the Masters than what he does in Grand Slams. In the Grand Slams, he's indestructible. He can't yeah. be stopped. And it but is when, five, yeah. And so. when he's out of that, then that's where he's a bit tricky. Granted, okay, if he gets to the final, I think he would be all right. I don't see him losing the final, but I wouldn't have seen him losing the final anyway because he's got that mental edge. He will, will, will rise to the occasion. For me, if Djokovic goes out, it'll be a semis or a quarter or something like that. Indeed. Mate, it's a, well, it's just super exciting for me. I, I think that it plays into Djokovic's hands. If you get five set final, <laughs> you're just saying, there you go. How would you like the final to be, Djokovic? If you could ask him, he would say, oh, I'll take five sets, please. Yeah. And there you go. So that, that will most likely be be what's going to happen obviously the last two finals murray won hey won. i would go as far as saying Djokovic is the best player to ever play the game and you know i'm a big rafa fan i'm going to honestly put this out there Djokovic for me is the best player in the world ever over five sets 
Oh, yeah, for sure. In that kind sure. of environment, there's no one who can rival him. I like rival him. I, I fancy him. If, if it, the longer a match goes on, I just think he's he just grows into it and gets better and better. Well, Mike, Michael's jumping in saying it is best of three final yeah, this year. Yeah, I did think that and before this podcast until you were saying it, but I'm not Dang. entirely sure. There's some people saying best of five, best of three. Regardless of that, let's put it... Let's, we know there's definitely starting off best of three. So on that basis, unfortunately, sorry guys for not giving you the correct information. Um, I thought- we should know this, but it's difficult because everything's always changing. But regardless of that, we 100% know it's starting with best of three. And that's where I think he's going to get, he could get unstuck. I know it's the it's the safe pick to go for him to win, but let's see what happens with that for sure. Um, we've got Gunnar there saying, Djokovic, the most danger is one, Medvedev, two, Zverev, three, Sittipas, four, Rublev, five, Berrettini. Uh, but I think Berrettini will still win but he can't play against Djokovic. Yeah. Uh, I can okay, I understand yeah, what you're saying yeah, with the serving and the, and the strength. But hey, I look, let's see what happens. Yeah, I, had a look on the, I had a look on the thing. I mean, it says on here, I mean, I'm taking Wikipedia's advice uh, here, which sometimes can be a bit of a bad thing. It says players and teams uh, reaching the semifinals will be assured of competing for a medal, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all singles matches will be the best of three sets with a standard tie break, first to seven points in every set, including the final set of the, okay. in the singles competition. Okay, so okay. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't state anything about the final, so I'm guessing that it applies to all then. So we just yep. have to assume that's what's happening. Which is a bad thing for Djokovic. It is bad. Yeah, that is not good. Look, that look is... what happened at the ATP finals. Medvedev, indestructible over three. Looked amazing. Who did he, he beat? What? What he beat everyone. He beat Nadal. Did he beat Nadal? Uh, was it City Pass as well? Djokovic and team. Who? Medvedev. Yeah, yeah. He beat them all, yeah. mate. He yeah, beat them all. Literally everybody. He just <laughs> wiped the floor with everyone. He didn't. He he lost all of them the last time he played there, and then he won them all the next time he played there. So, I think it's just going to be super exciting to see Medvedev back on the hard courts again. He will be the main competitor to Djokovic, no doubt. He got to the last hard court Slam final to meet him there. He won the ATP Finals. He won Masters events last year on hard court. He had that astounding run of form where he won multiple matches in a row at the back end of last year. It was only that final in Australia that let him down. Just nerves, probably, and just playing one of the greatest players ever to play the game. But he'll get there. And do you know who I'll be cheering on this Olympics? You'll be surprised. Who am I going to be supporting? Yeah, correct, sir. You got it in one. Well, I'm actually mate. going to be cheering on Karatsev probably more than some that, than Andy Murray for GB because I just want to see the Karatsev power. I want to see a special story here at the Olympics. And I oh, think he, I, he could do it. He t- generally could. He beat Djokovic in three sets as well on the clay in Belgrade. So he used to say he can't do it on the hard. Um, I want to see him back on hard. Yeah. But we've been speaking enough about the men's. Let's move on to the women's. Uh, we don't have a list for the women's, but there is some really big withdrawals I can sort of just list off. The biggest one for me, Serena Williams out. Uh, you've got Kerber, obviously the, the silver medalist here last year, or last year, the last event, the last time yeah. the Olympics was held. Uh, you've got Hallett withdrawn, uh, Conta, Andreescu, Kenin. They're the big yeah. ones I've got. I don't know if you've got any other ones. I haven't got any other ones other than that. I was trying to scour around just beforehand just to try and find out uh, yeah. just if there were any more. But let us know in the live chat if you know any more updates on any women that have dropped out of the tournament. It's Asaka, is she definitely going to be 100%. there? 100%. That's 100%. Asaka is playing in Tokyo. It's a home Olympics. Um, there's going to be, I don't think there's any fans allowed in, if I'm correct. No, no. But there's going to be people queuing at gates trying to just get a glimpse of her. Um, yeah. Just from outside hotels or wherever, because she is an absolute star there. She's absolutely huge. I can't, I'm trying to think of like David Beckham in here in England, but I think even she's probably bigger in Japan than what David Beckham is to England, maybe, if that's possible. Quite, quite possible, mate. I think so. She's the highest uh, yep. earning athlete for a reason in the world. She has a massive following uh, over there in Japan. It's going to be exciting, mate. That could be the thing that drives her on and hopefully gets her over this sort of I don't know. It's a bit of a hump that she's on at the moment. She just needs to get over that and just get her confidence back. 
maybe winning the Olympics would be the thing that gets her that confidence back. So yeah. I, we have to wait and see, though. I think it's super exciting seeing her playing in Japan. I would love it if there were fans there for her. I think that yeah. that would really, if she just felt all the love from them, I think that that would really bring her out of her shell a bit more. But yeah, yeah it just is what it is. I mean, at the moment, obviously, she's been going through a tough time. We can't get on her back too much about it. I'm just happy to see her playing tennis again and on hard court yep. again. That's where she's where she's most dangerous. So, Good comment there from Vance. Feel bad for Nishikori and Osaka. Won't get the crowd cheering for them. Yeah. That is the big sad thing for me because they would be lauded as heroes regardless of if they win or lose because they're incredible tennis players. And to, it's just such a shame to not have the Japanese fans there watching their stars in their own Olympics live and being there and feeling the atmosphere and creating a real buzz. I yeah. know what it was like in London. One of the best feelings of my life. It was amazing. It really was. So that is sad. I think Osaka's going to win the whole thing, though. I really do. Reason being, I don't think she's... I think she plays better when there's no crowds. I really do. We saw yeah. her in the US Open uh, when the start of COVID and things. She cleaned the, she cleaned the court the, the court off of everyone. Just completely yeah. dominated. Was brilliant. Even played well against Azarenka, I believe, in the final. Azarenka, another name, just, just come to me. She's not going to be playing as well. Um, so Osaka, in these situation where there's no fans, I think we're going to see her best tennis. So, like above the wind saying, it's going to be like the US Open, no crowd, in her hometown, ready. And I think she's she's going to absolutely smash it out of the park. Uh, man, I hope so, mate. Uh, I just hope that there's going to be enough people there to to challenge and to, to give her a good match because at the, at the moment, you see, there's a lot of people dropping out. <sighs> so a lot of the top players as well. It could just be a clean sweep for her, maybe could be an easy one um and, and then and then also the big news serena williams we've not really spoke about her she's the she's the champion in 2012 she won in london she's got that gold medal under her belt she's not going to be defending it um yeah mate that, who's that? The, who's the lot well yeah she won it in 2016 that's what i was monica puig won it puig. in okay. 2016 yeah bit of a unusual winner she i believe she beat kerber in the final was it yeah yeah, yeah kerber, kerber. Yeah. Kerber in the final. The one before that, arguably much more exciting. Serena versus Sharapova in the final. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, that's a, cl <laughs> well, what a classic final that is. That was the one in London. Yeah, mate. What yeah. an epic. What an yeah, epic yeah. as well. And I yeah, love I remember when the London ones played at Wimbledon as well. So it just makes it even more. Well, epic. in the men's, we had Del Potro um, uh, Murray. Well, yeah, then the Met. No, no, we had Federer Murray in oh, London. Oh, Federer, mate. yeah, he, sorry, he done him in straight sets, yeah. mate. It was amazing. Just after losing to him as well in the <laughs> final, you're like, no, lost to him in the final in Wimbledon, then smashed him like a month later in the Olympics. But, mate, it was exciting. Uh, I can't wait to see this this sort of interesting on hard courts as well. And next one, it's going to be probably on the clay, probably going to be Roland Garros will be the tournament where everybody's going to be playing because it's in Paris 2024. Yep. This one, this is a chance for, for Djokovic, I think, for the hardcores, for Medvedev maybe, for for all of these other hardcore. Maybe, yep. And well, no, Andreescu's out. Maybe Osaka. I think this is just written in the stars for Osaka, to be honest. Yeah, it perfect. No fans is, in Tokyo. And there's a lot of other big names dropped out on hard courts. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's got to be, surely. It's, it's perfect for Osaka. Um, Serena Williams, though, we're never going to see her at Olympics again. I'm more or less no, certain of that, which is sad. That. Roger Federer, don't think we're ever going to see him at Olympics ever again. Stan Wawrinka, don't think we're ever going to see him. That's someone we've not spoke about. These are real huge tennis players, like people I've grown up, and they're the yeah, only people I've sure. ever really known in tennis, if I'm honest. And they're never going to be playing for an Olympics. That that kind of sucks a little bit. Yeah. I would say Rafa on the doubt, but I think he's going to be back for Paris, mate. Oh, if mate, it's in Roland back. Garros, if it's in Roland Garros, he might he delay will. his. I think he'll delay his retirement, mate. Even if he's retired, he'll just come out of retirement to play the <laughs> Paris Olympics, guaranteed. He'll be there. He'll be flying the flag for Spain. That's for sure. Well, you've got uh, Wild Love saying you're not going to see Nadal at the Olympics again, mate. I don't. I think even if he's retired, he'll come back just for it. Yeah, <laughs> um, why not? 
no, it, it'll be special nonetheless. But let's on on the Tokyo. I'm actually my the, the reason I wanted to do this podcast is because I wanted to shed a more positive light on the tournament. I think it's going to be fun. It will be fun. We saw the US Open in the end. That was without fans. It turned out to be quite fun. I know we're getting used to having it again now with Wimbledon. It was great to have that at full capacity. It does make a big difference. No doubts about it. But I think the draw is still going to be super competitive. Being best of three as well, it's only even the playing field a little bit. And if you're looking at competitiveness, this Tokyo Olympics will 100%, in my opinion, be a lot more competitive than Wimbledon. Mate, I think, I think it's, it's closer. Be, I think it's definitely closer. It's closer because it's on the hard courts. There's more threats to Djokovic there. And it's closer... Uh, because it's less sets as well, and there's more yep. chance that well, there's less chance for him to slip okay. up. That's as it. Liam says, great point there. There's more potential for upsets over three sets. Yeah. It's just facts. It is because if you look over the, all of these players' careers, even the top players, we go to someone even like Nadal. How many times does Nadal lose over five sets on clay? Well, yeah. three times. That's how many times. How many times has he lost over well over the two sets or the three set match? Well, oh, he's lost numerous times to different people. Murray, Djokovic, Sitapat, he, he, he can be beaten. But when you go over five sets, different different animal. This yeah. same with Djokovic as well. Different animal. These these guys thrive on five set matches. And you gotta put them away when you can. Like like Sonego did to him in uh in the other one. When you play out of your skin and uh, the other player doesn't has a bit of an off day. You can you can lose quite quickly. And that's just how it is. So it, they're going to have to still turn up. It's not a foregone conclusion. Oh, he's just going to walk it. No, Djokovic will have to turn up and play his best tennis. And he'll still have to play the business ends the same way he plays them all the time. I still believe in him. I still think that he can do it. I've got the faith. And uh, I want to see history. Yeah, I think that's very uh, evident, mate. You're definitely going hard on the Djokovic thing. You want to see the history. I think this could be his, his banana skin, if I'm honest. He's obviously the big favourite. And I know I started the podcast saying he probably will win. Part of me thinks that right now. But I've got a lot of hope in some of the other players to upset the apple cart. And I think it is possible. It but is. I'm all, I'm, I'm just here for a good, a good tournament. And let's see what happens with it. I think we're going to wrap that one up here. Yeah. Um, I know someone was talking about Osaka. Her documentary on Netflix has come out. Mm. I'm going to be giving that a watch over the weekend. Same. Maybe we'll talk about it on the next podcast. I might do a um, pod on it. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see with, with our time and schedule. Maybe we'll do something. But for now, I think we'll wrap it up. Big shout out to everyone who joined us this one. If you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe. We'll be doing some more podcasts. I'm not sure this weekend. I know you're a bit busy with your girlfriend's uh, birthday and things. But we okay. do have a very, very special um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. <laughs> what? Can I say what it is? Well, mate, it's just uh, yeah. There's going to be another uh, special surprise coming, but I've been working on it for the past three or four days. So you'll just have to wait. Uh, it'll hopefully be over this weekend. So I'm going to try and get it finished tonight, though, if possible. Can I give them a clue that it's music? Yeah, well, I'm sure Too everybody late. knows. When we said, whenever we say it's definitely special... musical, so just look out for that. <laughs> but no, it's, I've not listened to it either, but it should be very good. Ben's been bigging it up, so that will right. be dropping soon. But Ben's been very busy with that, and obviously his girlfriend's yeah. birthday as well. But when that's all over with, we'll be bringing more podcasts and we'll be back. We've got about just over a week until the Olympics start. Um, we've got 12 travel to one saying congrats to Mrs. <laughs> ben on her birthday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nyoki's had a 20 and counting. It's not called 20 and counting, but there could be something to do with Djokovic. But let's see. Could well be. Could well be. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Anyway, thanks, guys, and have a good night or morning, wherever you're from. (laughs) Indeed, guys. Take it easy.